this video we are going to take a look at this Revox B226 CD player and upgrade its display from this to this. The change was prompted by stumbling upon these replacements on eBay. Unlike the original display, these are LED backlit, available in a few colors and compatible with Studer models 7 to 7 and 7 to 5 and Revox models 226, 126, 226E and 226S. If you've got one of these units with a broken screen or would simply like to pimp your Revox, you might want to look these up. There was nothing wrong with the display in this unit, it's just very hard to see from a distance, especially in a dimly lit environment. This is the replacement display we are going to fit in. It's LED backlit and will certainly transform this 80s device into a more modern looking one. It feels especially at home on the versions with the sleek black and silver buttons. The replacement process is fairly straightforward. Revox machines being famous for their ease of repair. Let's first remove the side panels. There are two screws on each side. Five more at the back and we can lift up the cover. Hiding beneath is a very tidy, almost computer-like built device. All main blocks are laid out on separate boards to the left and right of the center place transport. Revox use a very solidly built and reliable Philips transport. Just look at how even the CD tray mechanism pretends it's a conveyor belt. To gain access to the display, we must free the fascia by unscrewing four screws at the top and four at the bottom. This comes off quite easily. However, we should not forget to first unplug the connectors. These are simple pin plugs and require no force to pull out or plug back in. At first, it might seem that they could be plugged in either way, this is however not the case. Each plug has a missing pin that makes it impossible to be inserted the other way around. Removing the original display is only a matter of removing these three screws and lifting the board up. The new display seems like it would fit right in. However, there are two wires with pins at the end while the original display has only one. The replacement part had absolutely no instructions, so let's figure this out. One of the wires has the exact same pin layout as the original display. Oh, got it! Since the original display has no backlight, it's illuminated by this incandescent bulb. <laughs> Remember these? It's interesting that the actual bulb is painted green. So, the connector for the bulb will probably supply our LED backlight, the two-wire connector, on the new display board. With this sorted, it's time to remove the protective film and get ready to swap the display. And here's where I struggled a bit, as the new unit is a bit thicker, probably because of the added backlight. It can be pushed in with a bit of force to be held in place by the clips on one side and the screws on the other, but the board feels bent and I fear it might crack over time. After fiddling for a bit and trying to fit the board, I remembered that this is a Revox and all parts should be easily serviced. These clips allow you to fully lift the display frame, making installation much easier. The transparent front panel can also be slid off, making cleaning or even a polish easily possible. I only later noticed an image in the original listing that seemed to indicate to leave the new board above the retaining clips. But then, the display doesn't seem to lay flush with the surrounding black frame. Anyways, this is something we'll revisit eventually. For now, let's put the display frame back, making sure the clips are aligned so everything clicks back into place. The backlight wire goes through this cutout and plugs into the socket originally powering the bulb. It's a 3-pin connector with only 2 pins to help determine the correct orientation. The display connector matches the original pins exactly. I had previously numbered all connectors to avoid confusion regarding each plug's socket. Make sure the infrared receiver is straight so that it can slide back into its slot when mounting the front panel back. Let's double check all connectors before plugging in for testing. Wow, this looks perfect! So nice! It's so much brighter and clearer! 
Let's load the disk just to make sure everything displays properly. And it does! It's so much better! To reassemble the Revox, just use the magic of video editing and everything is put back together. This particular unit was untouched since new and still works wonderfully. I am pondering whether to do a full recap before anything fails or just wait for it to show any sign of weakness. For those new to this, recapping is the process of removing old capacitors that have gone bad over time and replacing them with new ones, but this is a subject outside the scope of this video. The replacement display mirrors the layout and functionality of the original one. You can see the current and remaining track time and a very modern looking progress bar below. Next, the current track and total elapsed or remaining disk time. In this mode, the bar indicates elapsed and remaining tracks. The display will also show when playback is paused, different functions or help with programming. These Revox CD players can be programmed to basically play any sequence of tracks with a few interesting loops and twists. Without going too much into detail, the professional pedigree of the device is obvious. Auto stop will stop playback at the end of the current track. When the eject pardon load button is pushed, the display is turned off until the tray is closed again. Stack with the Revox B215 cassette tape deck of the same series, it looks stunning. The tape deck has also received the same new display treatment, and with it, both devices look modern and beautiful. And yes, there will be a video about replacing that one as well. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when it's out. I really love this Revox CD player and use it as my main transport connected over Speedif coaxial. The fixed or variable analog outputs are fed by what is considered by some the best ever DAC chip, the 16-bit TDA-1541A. Make no mistake, this was at heart a professional tool. It looks like a Bauhaus estate, works like a Swiss watch, and sounds as transparent as Alpine spring water. The mechanism is mostly heavy metal, and the sound is heartwarmingly classical. If you want a CD player for your hi-fi today, you'd have to venture quite high up the pricing ladder for this level of build quality. These were expensive machines in their day, but a second-hand one nowadays, even with a bit of servicing, might be a steal. And if you don't like the sound of the 80s TDA chip, just connect the Revox via coaxial to your favorite modern DAC and you're all set. If this brightened display of gorgeous 80s technology was right up your track and would like to see future content along these lines, consider liking, subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Thanks for tagging along this trip down nostalgia lane. And now back to the real world.